Hey, so what is going on everyone? It is me, Mr. Mario, and today we are going to be covering another episode of Tales from the Classroom. So in case you do not know, Tales from the Classroom is a series that I do kind of rarely, but I started a few years ago on this channel, and these are essentially classroom stories that I have to tell, and they can go anywhere from, you know, my educational career, so anywhere from elementary school up until college. So I've told a few stories from high school, I've told a few stories from college, uh, but I've never told anything from middle or elementary school. But this is going to be another college one, and I would I actually really recommend watching the episode before this, where I talk about, you know, the Rick James type thing, uh, just so this makes sense, because this is actually going to be about the same class. So in case you don't know, this past semester, so this was spring of 2015, I ended up taking a history of rock and roll class. And I took this class because I'm doing a thematic sequence for my major, which which is management information systems under the history of music. It's essentially like a mini minor, and I'll be honest, it's not really it's not really that beneficial in the workplace. It really isn't, no matter what you do. And it's not just like history of music. It's essentially a series of three classes that you have to take that all relate to each other to give you the thematic sequence. So you could do a thematic sequence in computer science or biology or psychology, whatever you want to do. Uh, but it really doesn't go anywhere. It, like you, there's no way to really like incorporate incorporate it into your work field, honestly. So that's why I took History Music, because not only there were some easy classes, but a good GPA buffer, and at the same time, it was something I'm legitimately interested in. I am, I've always been fascinated by music. I love it. You know, I can't play it, but I'm a very big music connoisseur. So what ended up happening was I ended up taking my all-time favorite class so far, <laughs> and this is History of Rock and Roll. Now, it was taught by a middle-aged super white guy, just like kind of slightly overweight, just average white dad looking guy, and it was taught in a chapel as well. Rock and roll isn't really the most, you know, Christian or holy type of genre of music, as many people might know. Uh, so there was a lot of stuff that he kind of had to skim on or lightly go into. Uh, and there was also other stuff where it's just like you're sitting there, you're like, we're in a chapel listening to this. Like, what is going to happen in the afterlife? I don't know. <laughs> but overall, I mean, it was a really good experience. But just sitting in the chapel, taking this, it, taking this whole class was just... It was an experience onto itself, and that even happened with the previous story where, as I said, there was the woman that came in to talk about Rick James. She even had to, like, correct herself at one point because she said something, and then she was even coming in. She's like, well, you know, at first I was okay talking about this, then I found out it's going to be in a chapel, so I'm like, I don't know how much I could say about Rick James in a chapel, like, under the face of God. <laughs> but what ended up happening was this was the last day. Now, the last two days of class, we were talking about the history of rap, and this essentially works up from, you know, the beginnings of music up until, you know, the 90s, early 2000s, and it doesn't just cover rock and roll, it covers uh, the blues, it covers rap, hip-hop, rock, um, skiffle, I want to say that's another thing, uh, British pop, things like that, uh, just how everything ties in together, because you kind of start learning that everything has either a way of life or a tie back to rock and roll, and even rock and roll has so many ties back to other things, uh, and one thing I absolutely, like, I, I really loved about it as well, too, um, is there's, you know, obviously there's racial stigmas with everything as well, so, for example, uh, they said, you know, after the World War II era and everything, one once rock and roll was getting really popular, the first like big rock and rollers were not white. They were actually black. They were in the U.S. and this is when segregation was going on as well too. Uh, so for example, you would have a huge black rock and roll star who couldn't even use the bathroom at the venue he was performing at. He had to go across the street and change his clothes to use the bathroom and then come into the venue and go through you know the back doors and everything just because of the racial segregation and everything that was going on at that time. It would have been illegal if he did that otherwise which was just crazy, but essentially one of my favorite parts in the class was when they were saying that uh, one example was most of the big rock and rollers at the time were black, and surprisingly, the biggest people who were consuming this music, listening to it, and purchasing it, of course, in secret as well, too, were middle-aged white kids who were, you know, in their 20s, or they might have been, you know, in their teenage years, anything like that, and parents absolutely hated it, and it's funny, because this is essentially what's happened with rap as well, too, you know, especially in the 90s, early 2000s, where it was really the exact same thing that was going on, just another genre of music, so it's really interesting to see how history kind of manifests and repeats 
repeats itself in different areas. And that's another big thing. You know, most people see rock and roll and rock as a black type music, well, white type music. And it's like, no, it actually was sourced and has heavy inspiration from black music and genres and all that. Uh, but that's, you know, a whole nother thing. But I kind of wanted to get into that as well, too, because it's real nice to see. And, you know, if you if you look into it, just look into the history, read about it, and you can educate some real ignorant people about it as well, too. <laughs> but essentially, as I said, this is in a chapel. It was taught by just an average white looking dad. And the best class period I ever had in there, and probably in all my classes I've had, because as I said, this is my all-time favorite class, but probably one of my best class periods, if not the best class period, was the last day of class. We were finishing up talking about rock, rap and rock and, you know, hip-hop and everything, and then we were going into, you know, the early 2000s, present day, all that. We had to finish some other stuff. So what ends up happening is, as I said, we're in this big chapel. At the front, you have a projector screen, and there's a projector in the back. He had everything running through the sound system. Uh, he had his MacBook hooked up. And then we start talking about, you know, the OGs. So we start talking about East Coast, West Coast. We mostly focused on West Coast rap, but we didn't really talk. He touched up on Biggie and Tupac, but he didn't really talk about it too much just because there was so much stuff to cover. But I was really disappointed by that, honestly. That was one of the disappointments for me in the class just because that was a pretty big thing that happened. Uh, but what ended up happening was... He starts talking about Ice T. He's talking about Ice Cube, and then he talks about the NWA. And he had an entire slide dedicated to the NWA. And I'll be honest, because of my race, some people might be okay with me saying the what the acronym is out loud, and others might not. Uh, but I would encourage you look up NWA, like look up the rap group. And he had that completely like spelled out and everything too. He didn't want to say it because there were a lot of black people in the class as well, and people from every single race and ethnicity. So he didn't want to offend anyone but I'm just sitting there like with this dumb smile on my face and my jaw just like slightly dropped I'm like oh my god he has it just in front of a few hundred people just spelled out right there we're in the middle of this chapel <laughs> like learning about this and I was just trying not to crack up the entire time just because of like the sheer irony of everything and how it all just like fit into play. Uh, but what happened was he was talking about the NWA and then he even said, you know, their first big single was straight out of Compton. And he was just like, yeah, so um, we're going to be talking about straight out of Compton and uh, we're going to play a bit of it as well, too, because he normally played, you know, bits of the songs and everything through music videos. He said, we're going to be playing a bit of the song, uh, but I, I would, I'm just going to say they do cuss quite a lot and they uh, they like to say the F word. So um, if you're offended by that, just uh, please like cover your ears or something. So he goes on to the next slide and starts playing about a minute and a half of the uncensored version of the Straight Outta Compton music video, which just made me laugh. And I'm just like, I can't believe this is... This is my Friday right here. This is perfect. This is on a Friday too, so excellent day as well. But yeah, no, as I said, we had an entire slide about it. And fun fact, if you really look into the NWA and all that, uh, even their first album had uh, it was it was talked about so much just because uh, the FBI actually came uh, like had to observe and look at it, and they want to stop the distribution of it because you know it talked about killing cops and all that other stuff. Uh, so it was a really big album at the time, just in terms of you know uh, the quality and what they were putting into the actual lyrics and what everything was about. So it was really interesting to see, uh, especially like you know with all the controversy and all. And of course, you know kids are going to be attracted to all that controversy. But what happens is we end up reading, like, we, we read about it, we hear the song, he just plays a bit of the music video, and the, the class is just, like, in stunned silence because they're like, are we, can we do this? Like, is this okay or not? <laughs> so we start going on a little bit more about other artists. He talks about other people and everything. Then about 10 minutes after the whole NWA straight out of Compton thing, he Rick Rolls the entire class. <laughs> now, if you don't know what Rick Rolling is, it is essentially when you take Rick Astley's music video for Never Gonna Give You Up, and I actually like that song, I really do, uh, but then you essentially end up, you know, bring it to like a level of trolling. So, for example, like a really basic thing to do, which was really plaguing YouTube years and years ago, was, for example, whenever an artist dropped a new song, uh, people would put the artist's name and the new song in like new 2012, and then you would click on it and the thumbnail 
style and everything look like that artist and you click on it and you immediately see Rick Astley dancing and you hear the song and I thought it was a funny thing but people were just flipping out about it and people absolutely hated it but the reason why he even brought it up was because he was talking about a uh, pop out music videos where essentially it's a music video and it has like captions on the side and all these like little pop out like thought bubbles and talk bubbles uh, that tell a little bit of history about the artist and information and the song and the music video and all that stuff so he was trying to bring it to a educational light I want to say because it was all used under you know educational prefixes and everything but what ended up happening was he even said before and he was like so a lot of you might be familiar with the song and uh, I probably could have been, picked a better song, but we're just using it for the example. He Rick rolls us. I'm just busting out laughing at this point. And again, there's some awkwardness that's going on. But, you know, at the end, normally what I do at the end of each semester, I send a teacher, you know, a thank you email and tell them, you know, what I liked, what I didn't really like about the class, things like that. And I even told him, you know, this was the best class period because we're talking about that. You show NWA, you show the uncensored stuff, and then you Rick roll us 10 minutes later. And I even gave him a link to it, and he legitimately didn't even know what Rick Rowling was. He had no idea that was a phenomenon, that was a thing, that was a meme on the internet. He had no idea. But he said, yeah, I've been Rick Rowling my classes for quite a few years and I didn't even know. <laughs> so that is honestly the best class period I've had. Uh, and it's probably one of those things where it's much better if you experience it. Uh, but just because of that, I loved the class itself. I loved that part. And I just loved how everything was, you know, tying back together and everything. He even showed, you know, uh, for example, you know, there were always boy, like every decade or so or every other decade, there were always boy bands that were coming back. And it's like, it's still happening now. So we covered everything. It was really nice to see. Uh, but anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you for watching, everyone. Hope you all enjoyed this episode of Tales from the Classroom, and let me know if you've had anything like this that has happened in class.